Hey there! In this video I'm going to show you how to get started with my Extra Life Donation Tracker. First we'll cover how to download it, where to find documentation, then I'll show you the GUI and how the GUI works, what options you'll want to change, and then finally I'll show you how to use it in OBS or XSplit depending on which video you're watching. So someone has pointed you to this page here, uh, or I guess maybe you're watching this on YouTube and uh, so you click on the link on the bottom and this is where my releases will always be. I'm recording this before the release of 6.0 so the last release I made was 5.3 and so what you would do is you would click here on Windows download and it'll ask you about downloading the file. I've already got a 6.0 file on my computer so I canceled it but you'd obviously want to save it and keep track of where you saved it on your computer. If you want to find out what's changed since the last time and whether it's worth updating, you could go here to the release notes. So if you click on V and then whatever number of the release, um, here's what it looks like. It'll take you to the GitHub page. Here's what I've added, how to use it, uh, more instructions, some release notes. So lots of information that could be pretty useful to you if you want to decide whether or not it's worth upgrading. Um, here's a link to my Extra Life campaign if you want to donate to the campaign. Here are videos. These will be replaced with videos for version 6.0 once I'm done recording and editing the video. And finally, if for whatever reason you prefer uh, written documentation instead of video documentation, or maybe after you've watched this video you just want to find that one little piece you couldn't remember, you can go to here to my documentation. And that looks like this. And so um, the first three parts would be very useful to you if you're a user of the software, how to install it, how to use it, and um, how to edit the configuration files if you're not using the GUI. And then below that, these are just uh, useful if you're going to be helping with development, if you wanted to uh, help us develop. One last thing I wanted to mention uh, while we're here on the GitHub page, is if you find an issue, something that's a bug or something that's not working the way you want, or if you think of something you think I should add, you would just go to the GitHub page. So actually, if you were here, you go to view on GitHub, and then go to issues, and then click on new issue. Oh, I'm not signed in on this on this page. But essentially, I've got uh, some templates there if there's a bug, a template if you would like to ask for a new feature. You could just fill that out and I will get back to you. So I've, I've helped 73 bugs, although some of these are tracking for features I wanted to add. All right, so that's it for this part of the video. The next part is going to be how to use the GUI. Okay, you've now downloaded the file. If you're on Windows, if you're on Linux, the other instructions will have shown you how to get the files you need to start the GUI. Let's start it up. It takes a little while to start because it's uh, compressed into just one file, but that makes it a lot easier to launch. So the important first, so this will be blank uh, for you. Mine will eventually refresh with my information because I've used it before. And then um, this command line uh, thing here, I've got it here because it gives you some information on what's going on. So you can kind of use that if you're having issues to, sh to let me know what's going on and what's going wrong. And I'll, I also use it to communicate to you if there are things going wrong. Usually if anything here is red, that means something happened that was unexpected. Uh, on the off chance that there's a bug that causes everything to crash and you're on Windows, what you want to do then is uh, use PowerShell to start it up and then it, the errors will remain on this command line because this one will disappear if the program crashes. Okay. 
if you're on Linux, uh, because the GUI is exactly the same, except it'll match your uh, window settings. You know, it, it, instead of this, it'll look like the decorations you have on Linux. I'm just making one video because everything else is exactly the same. If you're on Linux, instead of having this command line pop up, you'll have launched it from a command line. And so that'll be there for you to check for any issues that are happening. Okay, so that's how you launch it. Let's take a look first at the settings window. So this is all the information you need to enter in order for the program to work. So the first thing you need is your participant ID. And where do you find that? Well, if you were to go to your extra life page, so this one's gonna bring mine up. All right, so here's, here's my page. And uh, yeah, if you have a web browser that hides the entire URL, you just wanna click up here and you'll see that the URL ends with participant ID equals and then a number. So you just wanna copy that number and paste it right into the settings right here, okay? The next thing you wanna do is you wanna set your text folder. So your text folder is a, the most important part for how this program works. It will take all the information that it grabs from the Extra Life website and write it to text files, which you'll then use in either OBS or XSplit to display the information you want to display. And we'll get to that in the next section. The other thing you can do that's important here is to make sure you've copied and pasted or typed in the right participant ID, you can validate it and it'll tell you that either you have yours right or you completely accidentally entered someone else's which would be one heck of a coincidence. And you can see here that there was information telling you that yes, we were able to reach uh, reach that website, okay? Your team ID, it's very similar. You would just click on the team that you're part of. Then up here, you see your team ID. You put it in there, validate your team ID, you're good. Uh, currency symbol, just uh, I think in all the places where Extra Life is run, America and Canada, it's a dollar sign, but you can change it to whatever you wanted it to be. For donors to display, this is, and again, I'll demonstrate this in the next section, but this is how many of the last X number of donors do you want to appear on the screen? So I'm usually okay with five, but I don't have a ton of donors. Um, you'll have to, it'll depend on how many you get. And also it'll depend on how many you want to show on the screen at once, because it could potentially, you know, overrun your screen. Then th these two parts here, the tracker image and the donation sound, uh, this is so that when someone donates, it'll show up a little pop-up on your screen and you can have whatever image you want there and whatever sound you want to play. If you don't have anything to use, you can click on grab from GitHub and it'll download the file for you uh, it'll be an, an image file and a sound. So uh, let me show you what that'll look like. Now this is green so that you can make the green disappear in OBS or XSplit, but this is what the alert will look like. Now you see how the words there are too big. Well, that's the next part here. You can change the font and the, and the color. So I'm gonna change the font to be smaller, let's say 24, let's see how that looks. Okay, maybe that's a little smaller than I want, but you can kind of play around and see, maybe 26 works a little better. But anyway, whatever you want it to be. So we'll see exactly how you use this in the next section. You can change the color, maybe you don't like white text, maybe you want the text to be red. And you can change the background color. Maybe you don't want to use a uh, green chroma key. Maybe you want to use blue um, or some other color. You, whatever color you want to erase uh, in case you need it to, I guess, not match with the uh, the color of the, the image you have there. So go back and put it to green. Did that, did that take? Let me see. Green, no, that didn't take. Gotta bring this way up. There we go. All right, so we're back to green. All right, when you're done with everything, just hit save. If halfway through you get to some kind of mistake, 
and you don't know what to do, you can hit revert and it'll go back to whatever it was the last time you opened it. Now, I just wanna show you really quickly what kind of image you want if you wanna have some image there. You want to have a transparent image, usually a PNG file, and you want it to look like this. You want there to be, if you were to open it in, in Photoshop, a whole bunch of dots here uh, or a checkered background. That means that all of this is, is transparent and whatever you have here will show behind it. If this was white, that's not gonna look good when you put it in into the tracker for OBS. You want it to be a transparent background and then whatever image you have, right? So as you can see, when I bring a background back, because it's transparent, you see me and you see me in front of this thing, right? So that's the type of image you want. You can find them all over the internet or you can make your own. Okay, that's everything you need to know for the setup. This window here was the tracker. Oops. Let's uh, open that up again. We'll move it over. Progress bar hasn't been implemented yet. Uh, force refresh is if you want to uh, refresh the information on this window. It refreshes about every 15 minutes, but maybe that's not... Uh, sorry, every 15 seconds. Maybe you need it to come in a little faster. Fine. But this is kind of a representation of most of the information that's in the text files that this program collects. So it kind of gives you a chance to do a sanity check that the information is what you expect it to be. Because this is drawing from those text files. Uh, in fact, let me open up the folder so you can see what the text files look like. Okay, so let's take a look at the top five, te top five team participants. And there you go. So uh, this should match what's here. Alia, James, myself, Martin, and Zeldar. So you see it's all there. That's where it's grabbing it from. When everything is all set, all you need to do is hit run. And it'll give you a few messages here about the settings. And once you start seeing timestamps appear on here, that's how you'll know that it's grabbing the data from the API and it'll start updating your text files, which we'll see in the next section. And this data will also update every 15 seconds or so if there is a new change. So if someone donates or something changes while it's running. So if anything, if you see anything red here that it couldn't reach the API, sometimes that happens on game day. Too many people are trying to use it. One of the years we had a DDoS attack on Extra Life. And so it couldn't be provided. It'll show it on there. Um, at this point, I think I've covered most of the cases where there could be a crash due to that. So the software shouldn't crash, it just won't update. But if it does crash, feel free to file an issue and let me know so that I can try and fix it. When you're done, you can hit stop and go to file quit, or you can just go file quit and it'll stop either way. Uh, a couple quick things here so that you can check for updates. It'll let you know if you have the latest version or not. You can see a, the about page, which gives you some information on where to file bugs and so forth. And finally, if you go to documentation here, it'll launch the web page with the documentation as we saw before. So now let's move on to the next section. How do we use this in OBS? Okay, so I've now started up OBS, and you don't have to have it in this studio mode. This just allows me to show you what I'm doing and what it's going to look like or what you're trying to set up. So over here is essentially what you'd be doing as the user, and here is what the people who are watching you in the live stream or on the video that you put on YouTube would see. So let's start off with the tracker. The tracker was the thing that was that said you have a donation, right? So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to add a uh, where did it go? Window capture. Okay. And uh, you can see I've done it in the past, but I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do tracker 2021. Okay. So what window 
do I want to capture? We're going to go to the tracker. You're going to say uh, window title must match. And there you go. So there it is. And if I, and at the moment, you see, see, there it is. And I just realized you haven't been hearing the sound. So I will very quickly add that in. You got a donation. There we go. All right. So obviously that's not what you want. So let's go here and we'll click on filters. And you'll click on uh, chroma key. And boom, you see it just disappeared. And now it looks like this. You got a donation. And uh, the reason there's some kind of weirdness around the letters there, I think has something to do with the particular shade of green that I picked rather than leaving it at the green that it was. But you can kind of play around with that to make it fit your situation. Now, just to kind of give you a better idea of what it will look like, when it's over something, I'm just going to add myself in really quickly. There I am. And we'll make this like this. And now we'll pretend that I had a donation while I'm talking. Hey, I'm playing a video game and I'm talking. You got a donation. Oh, right. I have to add it behind. Right. You got to make sure this is the topmost thing. That's an important thing. There you go. So, hey, folks. Da -da 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 -da. You got a donation. Oh, thank you for the donation, David, Kendra, and Kyra. And then it'll disappear on its own. And there you go. So, I'm going to turn myself off. All right, what else might you want to add? Well, let's say you want to have a scroll on the bottom of everyone that has donated to you. So, you would go into here and add a text source. And I, like you, you see here, I've done it before in the past when I was doing previous donations, uh, pre previous tutorials. Let's do a scrolling example. Now you want to do here read from file and browse you've got to go to the location where where you chose in your folder before that you wanted to save stuff and you want any uh you can scroll up and down i'm going to do a horizontal scroll that's more typical so anything that ends in horizontal so i'm going to do names and messages horizontal and there you go that's what that looks like so it's kind of huge don't think that's exactly what I'd like. So let's go to select font and let's try maybe 72. There we go. All right. So then what you want to do is go to uh, filters and scroll. Then you've got a horizontal and a vertical speed. So horizontal, you can go forwards or backwards, whatever makes sense. Uh, you know, in America with English reading left to right, you probably want it to go this way, right? So you want to go this way. You can make it go as fast or as slow as you want. So there you go. So as your donations are coming in, see the ones here where it's my name and none. I didn't have a message. Uh, David had a message. Please stop killing me in Spelunky. Um, if most of your donors don't have messages, um, then instead of name amount message horizontal, you would have just done name amount horizontal. And now you see it's just money, no messages. So it's up to you, depending on what most people who are donating to you are doing in your live stream. So you have that, obviously. There are also, um, you know, perhaps you don't want any, any scrolling, something that's just um, persistent on there, right? So you can have your uh, last donor. So you can do the last donation or the last donor. So those are not, nece not necessarily the same, but they might be. Because if the same donor makes more than one donation, those could be different. Go ahead and do this one. So again, you uh, may wish to make the font smaller. Oh, that's a little too small though. <laughs> Maybe somewhere around 18. Still too small. Again, you gotta play around with this before you start your live stream so you have a better idea of what it's going to look like. All right, one of the new ones that I added this year is the ability to grab your 
um, uploaded avatar or portrait. So for that, what you would do is a browser source, and then you go to local file, and here's your participant avatar. And I'm gonna leave the rest the same for the moment, and there I am, there's my face. So if whatever, however you wanted to do that, um, there's also the team avatar. The team that I'm a part of doesn't have an avatar, so there would be nothing to grab, um, but there's that. And so you can, you can essentially choose to have anything that doesn't have team in front of it is about yourself. Anything that does have team in front of it is from your team. So here's, if you wanted to keep track of how much your team has raised, or how much you've raised. Um, there's, you can see who the team captain is. So there's all kinds of information that you can make use of. All of this stuff will update every 15 seconds or so. All right, that's all you need to know in order to take advantage of this software and use it in OBS and have your data update every 15 seconds. Every time someone donates, within 15 seconds, it'll appear. It'll get your alert. You got a donation. And the data up here will change. So thank you very much for using this. And remember that we're saving the kids with the money that we're raising. It's for the kids. Bye.